Hello Hunters and welcome to another Monster Hunter lore video. I am Guildmaster Kaito and today we will be diving into another part of the Monster Hunter universe and its lore. Before we begin, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe for more content and for a plus comment what your favourite monster is down below and why. Thank you for tuning in, your support means a lot for bringing you more Monster Hunter content and videos. Now for today's topic, we are going to look at the main attraction of the series, which are the monsters themselves. Now what exactly are monsters in the world of Monster Hunter? Monsters is a very broad term for many reasons, but can be simplified in a few ways. Monsters in this world are referred to as the many creatures and beasts that inhabit many ecosystems across the lands that can be hostile or neutral depending on the species at hand. As said in my other video on hunters, monsters are the primary threat and adversaries of the main settlements of the world at large. Whether they are villages in the outskirts of the wilderness, trading caravans with precious goods, research expeditions and missions into the untamed lands, or massive fortresses built to withstand invasions or threats of varying scale, monsters can be an issue for many that live in the world of Monster Hunter. Not all monsters tend to be openly and actively aggressive though, and come in many shapes, sizes and temperaments, some even being quite alien in nature compared to most flora and fauna of the ecosystems of the world. At times, monsters are typically content with living out their natural lives, such as hunting, finding mates, wandering with herds on migration paths, or simply defending their territories from rival monsters. However, monsters tend to become a problem for civilization for one reason or another, but are commonly due to a wounded monster wandering from their territory, an overly aggressive monster looking for prey, elder dragons or powerful monsters causing the resident creatures to wander into villages or cities they normally don't encounter, or even during some monsters mating season they can be more aggressive or active than usual due to heightened competition. Thanks to much of the research done from sources such as the Wikademy or Research Commission's efforts, monsters have been categorised and identified to belong to a wide variety of classes, species, subspecies, variants and rarer across the old world and new world. Monsters come in many different forms and have many different attributes and adaptations based on their species and environment. The broadest identity found for monsters is by classes. The first class are small monsters and creatures that are most common and relatively neutral are herbivores. Herbivores are a class of small monsters that refer to plant-eating passive creatures that make up most monsters found in the wild. This class comes in the form of both reptilians and mammalians, and they are normally not a threat to hunters or civilization, even including instances where they are part of some cultures within the world. Examples of this can be how Aptanoth or Popo are used for farming and as work beasts, or Mufas have been known to be kept as livestock or pets. Mainly, this class of monsters are hunted by larger beasts for their primary food source and in most ecosystems are the bottom of the food chain. Even hunters learn early in training to make meat or food on the fly from hunting an Aptanoth or Laranoth for example. Neopterons are the next class of monster that inhabits the world at large. Neoterons are insectoid monsters that are recognized for their bug and insect appearance as well as their carapace and exoskeleton biology. These monsters can vary much in biological aspects, such as size, adaptations for flight, diet, social interactions, and capabilities. Small neopaterans tend to be more social creatures with hive-like social structures such as Vespoid or Alaroth, and tend to be more passive unless the hive is provoked. On the other end of the spectrum, however, there are large monsters that make up this class and can be threatening to other creatures and humans alike. An example of these Neoperoron includes Celtas and Celtas queens which can be threatening during mating season when Celtas queens attract many of the smaller Celtas males to an area to hunt or even the elusive Atalka which can be a high threat monster on the level of an elder dragon if disturbed or provoked. Another class of monsters like Neopterans are Temnoceran which are related to arachnids and have many related biological capabilities as well. Temnoceran monsters typically have six or more limbs like Neopterons and have the same exoskeleton-like carapace and biology as well. 
They also have the ability to produce silk or webbing from spinnerets on their abdomen like spiders and use this to hunt prey, build nests or use it to traverse the landscape. Nasilla, for example, use their webs and poison to ambush and trap prey by surprise, while having the speed to quickly retreat or chase if need be. They have been seen to make large nests from their webs as well, which have captured prey as well as eggs potentially. The next class is another close member for both Temnoceran and Neopterans, which are known as Carapaceans. Carapacean are commonly seen as large crustacean or scorpion like creatures that maintain hard exoskeleton carapaces like both Neopateron and Temnoceran and similar appendages as well. There are both small and large monsters of this class, with Hermitor and Daimyo Hermitor being examples of this respectively. They are seen in many different climates and areas, ranging from barren deserts to the shores of the ocean, searching for fish or small prey. Speaking of more aquatic life, there is another class of monsters known as amphibians. These monsters are very similar to creatures such as frogs, toads or salamanders and are known to inhabit a large range of environments. Usually, they are carnivorous and have specific adaptations to reside in their environment. For instance, Tetsukabra have adapted to have large tusks for burrowing or defending themselves from larger predators in their primary habitat of the Jurassic frontier. Meanwhile, Zamtrios thrive in the frozen iceway using their water and ice abilities to enlarge themselves against predators or hunt prey. The final class of non-wyvern monsters are the mammalian class of monsters known as fanged beasts. Fanged beasts are mammalian monsters that have characteristics that match different subcategories of mammals such as bears, primates, lemurs, badgers, wolves, mammoths and more. Fanged beasts tend to vary widely based on their habitat, behaviours and diet depending on what species they are. Azuras can be found in a number of environments but primarily in the misty peaks and have an omnivorous diet while living more solitary lives. Blangonga and Blango, however, live in large groups in cold mountainous climates, with groups being led by the alpha male Blangonga and hunt together on primarily carnivorous diets. With so many monster classes, these only represent half of the total classes of monsters, with the next wide range of monsters belonging to the more reptilian and dragon-like categories of creatures than many fans know and love. So far we have covered many of the classes of monsters and their characteristics, yet there is still a lot more to unfold as we dive into the most popular and fantastical class of monsters, the wyverns. If you are enjoying the video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for more Monster Hunter lore content. Also be sure to leave a comment about your favourite monster down below, as I would love to know what monster is coolest to you and why. Okay, let's get back into the video and explore the vast ecology and lore of the Wyvern class. Wyverns are the most numerous classes of monster and creatures in the world of monsters and have several subclasses of Wyverns that are vastly different from one another. Wyverns can be simply described as reptilian monsters with two hind legs they use to traverse on foot and a set of wings usually connected to the arms that are used for flying and walking for some wyvern classes. Wyverns have a vast menagerie of creatures that fall under this category from more theropod or dinosaur-like creatures such as Jaggy or Baroth to almost dragon-like monsters like Raphalos or Lagiacrus. Yet despite these similarities at first glance, Wyverns are not dragons or dinosaurs and are their own category of monster altogether. Not to say dragons do not exist in the world, but we will get that later of course. Now Wyverns, what better place to start than with the bird wyvern class and their many different species? Bird wyverns tend to be small or medium sized monsters that are bipedal and can have wings in some instances. Bird wyverns are the most numerous subclass of wyverns and have the most encounters with hunters and can cause small problems for settlements. Bird wyverns can be separated into two types, this being flying bird wyverns which are bird wyverns with functional wings and a more traditional wyvern appearance and theropod bird wyverns which resemble bipedal flightless dinosaur like monsters with stronger legs and long tails. Flying bird wyverns tend to be very reminiscent of birds with their appearance and behaviour 
going as far as most, having hard and powerful beaks used to attack prey or threats. Yarn Kutku have large and shovel-like beaks as they enjoy hunting for small prey such as Konchu and use their beaks to hurl out fire toward enemies, while the Kurupeko have adapted large beaks and colourful feathers to use their beak to mimic other large monster calls or roars to signal danger. Theropod bird wyverns tend to be raptor-like predators that hunt in packs and have a social structure like wolves in the form of a dominate alpha male leading younger females and beta males. They are the primary threat of small creatures in the many wilds having small presence in most areas as they forage or hunt for food such as jaggy packs being very prominent across the old world and following herds of Aptanoth. Some theropod bird wyverns even have distinct adaptations such as Roggy developing potent poison sacs to survive in the jungle against the many predators that stalk and hunt amongst these deep forest ecosystems. The next class of wyvern, similar in build and physiology, are the brute wyvern class. These wyverns are another flightless and theropod class of wyverns that are usually large and have heavy builds. Brute wyverns are also well adapted for land utilizing their strong hind legs to traverse terrain rather than fly, some even having the ability to burrow beneath the earth. Most brute wyverns have small forelimbs that are almost unusable. Although there are some exceptions, such as the Brachidios, which have adapted their forelimbs for combat using their blast line for defense. Most, if not all, brute wyverns are highly aggressive and territorial as well, having many instances where they are high on the food chain for an ecosystem and patrol their territories for prey or rivals. Due to their lack of wings, many brute wyverns have made other strides in adaptation, such as the Glavinus and its bladed tail or the Uragan and its ability to roll on its steel like plates across its volcano environments while eating the minerals to enhance its plating and toughness. Now moving on, the next subclass of wyverns is the most famous and recognisable class of wyverns and are known far and wide for their ferocity and awe. Flying wyverns are the large and traditional form of wyverns in the world and make up many large monsters within the bestiary of the world. Flying monsters are typically large and bipedal wyverns that have wings capable of flight depending on the species. Some wyverns, such as Raphalos, are true masters of flight and aerial ability, while Diablos or Gravios can fly but mainly use their wings to help with burrowing underground. There are even instances where flying wyverns are quadrupedal, using their wings as another set of limbs or forearms to increase their land travel and agility instead of flight. A perfect example of a quadrupedal flying wyvern is the tigrix as they utilize their forelimbs to be very fast and agile hunters, chasing their prey down across the terrain and using their flight only to heighten speed or create an attack opportunity. Similar in build to flying wyverns in some cases are piscine wyverns, which are fish-like wyverns that have adapted to life swimming in different environments such as the oceans, rivers, muddy swamps or arid areas and even lava in some species. These creatures tend to thrive in their favoured habitat, however, can have a hard time with agility if they are forced to walk on land for combat or hunting. Plesioth are the bane of hunters in the oceans of the old world as they are very dangerous to come across on a hunting mission underwater or on a bad fishing trip if a hunter is unlucky. Like their class suggests, Plesioth thrive under the water, using their fins and slender body to swim at breakneck speeds to hunt prey or attack predators. However, once on land can be quite sluggish and held back from their natural potential. For the next class, although there are not as many recorded, are the snake wyverns. These wyverns are recognised for their serpentine and snake-like appearance or behaviour. Currently, two of this species have been recorded these being the Remobra, which are small flying snake wyverns that like to flock in high peaks and mountain ranges, and Najarala are large snake wyverns with coiling bodies and sound reactive scales that explode when activated, similar in some ways to a rattlesnake. Although little is known about snake wyverns, more monsters are discovered every day across the world and more will be found to add to the bestiary as the exploration of the new world continues. A similar class to snake wyverns, however, in a few ways are the leviathan class. 
These monsters are a class of large and small wyverns that are adapted to swimming and using their slender and long build to maintain movement in their favoured habitat. They tend to be the mirror apex predator to flying wyverns in their underwater or swamp environments and have adaptations and abilities to assist them. The most well-known leviathan is none other than the Largiacrus, which is a large blue crocodilian leviathan wyvern that roams the seas and rivers, utilizing their lighting dermal spikes to attack and hunt prey. Leviathans aren't always only found in water ecosystems, however, as many leviathans have found ways to live fear lives on land such as the Nibelsnoth and its life in and the desert sands, or a knuctor with its love for swimming and thriving in the lava lakes of volcanoes. Leviathan class wyverns are being discovered in multiple forms and places across the world, and some have very alien-like adaptations that have surprised researchers to say the least. Finally, of the wyvern kingdom of monsters are the fanged wyverns. These wyverns are described as more beast or even mammalian like wyverns, having developed highly functional forelimbs instead of wings and being primarily quadrupedal. Many fanged wyverns are very agile due to their more developed forelimbs and traversing the land is second nature instead of flight. They come as small monsters in the form of jagras or gyros, which hunt in packs like theropod bird wyverns with an alpha as a leader. These pale in comparison, however, to their large kin, such as the likes of Zinegru, with their powerful forelimbs, spiked tail, and lighting glands capable of making them apex predators. Most fanged wyverns have been noted to be hyper-aggressive or territorial as well, such as the Udagurun as its home in the Rotten Vale is filled with rivals over food, and they thrive being aggressive combatants over their meals or prey. Fanged wyverns have been found in most parts of both the Old and New World, and have a wide array of environments they inhabit. With so many classes of monster within the world, the guild and the hunters they employ have had their work cut out for them over the years. Yet one class of monsters remains as the most elusive, mystical, destructive and outright supernatural of them all. In the many cultures of the world, there are ruins, temples, books, warnings, omens, and sightings of creatures that defy the common biology of the monster's bestiary at large. Creatures thought to even have resemblance of sentience with their power and presence, and have tendencies that the guild has found almost impossible to fully record and understand. When fortresses are destroyed and left in utter ruin and devastation, no Rafalos could have wreaked or entire ecosystems left barren with nothing, but skeletons and fresh corpses left behind in the aftermath, what other creature could cause such destruction? The Elder Dragons are the most powerful and alien class of monster in all the world at large, creatures that defy all logic and normal classification when referred to known classes of monsters or wyverns. Some Elder Dragons do not even resemble the typical form of a dragon, and instead can have very alien forms or powers though akin to be supernatural or godlike. Most Elder Dragons are ancient beings and have roamed the world for thousands of years, if not longer all the way back to ancient times. Due to their immense power and strength, they are capable of mass levels of destruction and threats to both mortals and other monsters alike as they are the true apex creatures wherever they make an appearance. To truly explore and understand the depth of Elder Dragons will take some time due to much of their information being redacted, misinformed, or even outright kept away by the guild. Like stated in the review of Hunters, Elder Dragons are seen as the utmost and dangerous threat to civilization, and the guild makes haste to send the best of the best to defeat these creatures to save countless lives and ecosystems from destruction. The battle with these godlike dragons is thought to even be divine in some ways, as they are believed to even be the cause of the fall of the ancient civilization. There are even some elder dragons so old they are thought to have a burning hatred for mortal kind since the fall and remember the sins of the past against their kin. No matter the case, however, they are rarely sighted and stay hidden within their layers or secret kingdoms. Though the Elder Dragons are mythical and powerful to say the least, they are also thought to have a part in the origin of monsters everywhere and are even thought to maintain the ecological balance of the world itself. For most parts of the world, they are rarely seen or encountered, but in the event you do, 
then be sure to prepare yourself for a fight that you will never forget. Another interesting attribute that monsters have are the many variants, subspecies and forms they take on in many areas of the world. Many monsters have different subspecies that are like the base species but have adapted to their environment or way of life. An example of this is the base Rafalos and the azure Rafalos. Base Rafalos already have a great affinity for flight and ruling the skies as flying wyverns of wing and flame, yet the azure Rafalos takes this a step further. The Azure Raphalos is more adapted to aerial life and spends more of their time in the air and utilizing their adaptability for flight and aerial combat. Due to this, they live in different areas to base species Raphalos as well, such as the Misty Peaks. Another adaptation for subspecies monsters could be when the monster is isolated or forced to live in an environment not normal for their species. The sand barrier, for example, thrive with life in desert regions with adaptations different from their colder tundra counterpart. Due to the nature of monsters in the world, some subspecies can be drastically different from their base species and have different abilities, adaptations and tendencies almost like an entirely new species altogether. Even stranger and less encountered are variant and rare species monsters. These types of monsters can be due to numerous reasons, such as an older age monster, or they have been exposed to a particular element or environment to increase their mutation, or in some cases they have survived some sort of life-threatening encounter with either a hunter or other monster and have developed new mutations based on that event. Rare species monsters are normally monsters that have developed differently due to living in a very secluded area, often in ruins of ancient civilization, sites or places of mystery and power. Lucent Nagakuga and Silver Rafalos have been found in ancient civilization ruins and have immense power levels compared to their base species for example. New variants and species are found and discovered by the guild and research divisions every day, some being quite unnatural in appearance, and biology in some cases as well. Yet, in the end, despite the many classes and crazy adaptations of some monsters, they all tend to live their lives and exist in their own world. Monsters of the Monster Hunter world, bar a few ancient dragons, do not have a burning hatred to hunt or kill mortals and destroy settlements. Like us in many ways, they simply seek to live their lives, hunt for food, protect their territories and young, and live out their days in peace. It is a focus and goal of the guild to maintain and respect this balance of the natural world and not simply kill these fantastical creatures for greed or pleasure. Every hunt a hunter is sent on is for a purpose laid out and organized by the guild, which is for the overall balance of the world at the end. Poaching is a huge taboo amongst the guild and society, which dates back even to the mysterious fall of ancient civilization and as a result is illegal with severe punishments. There are even places in the world where monsters and mortals live in harmony with each other and have bonds to guide them in this dangerous world, but more on that will be discussed in a later lore review. As we come to the end of this lore dive into the overview of monsters in this amazing universe, I can't help but appreciate the sheer vastness of the monsters and creatures of Monster Hunter. All of them are unique, special, and have their own character and personality that light the hearts of hunters and people everywhere. Monsters can be truly terrifying creatures that wish to destroy everything around them, or docile animals that only seek to rear their young and survive just like us. There are so many monsters in this universe that even the guild and research divisions struggle to track them all, and more are found everywhere across the world. In this world we coexist with these majestic and mysterious creatures, big and small, and will continue to do so as we live in natural harmony and balance with the world and monsters around us. Once again, I hope you all have enjoyed the video and my overview of the lore of monsters in Monster Hunter. I have enjoyed making this video to bring a concise and simple way to understand monsters and their many classifications in the lore. Please, if you enjoyed the video and are interested in more Monster Hunter lore content or simply enjoy the world of Monster Hunter as much as I do, hit the like and subscribe button for more and make sure to leave a comment with your thoughts and favourite monster down below as I would love to hear from you. 
Until next time, I have been your host, Guildmaster Kaito. Happy hunting. <laughs>